Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. In my last lecture while discussing about the chemistry of hydrogen, I did mention uh, that the melting points and boiling points for P block elements okay, follow some uh, trend. However, in some groups those trends are violated. Okay. So, let us look into those things. That means, when you look into some of these physical or chemical properties in a particular group, generally the melting and the boiling points of a series of related molecular compounds increases with increase in the molecular size owing to an increase in number of intermolecular dispersion forces. This is seen uh, for example, along a homologous series of alkanes that is in case of group 14 hydrides of carbon if you consider CH4, methane, ethane, propane, butane and pentane and if you look into the melting point and boiling point they are steadily increasing and here as more and more CH2 groups are added more and more groups are available for to have intermolecular dispersion forces uh, will be generated. So, as more and more dispersive force centers are generated as a result what happens the association between these molecules increases and as a result they come close to each other resulting in melting and boiling point increase. Okay. So, that means then what would happen? to the melting and boiling points of P block hydrates. Uh, so, this trend is for group 14 elements, hydrates follow the same trend as expected as I had mentioned earlier, but in case of group 15, 16 and 17, the first member of the group behaves in a different way compared to their higher congeners. That means, for example, in case of group 15, nitrogen hydride or ammonia or in case of uh, group 16, water or in group 17, hydrogen fluoride, they behave little different than the rest of the elements. Uh, that means, essentially these uh, hydrates, first member from 15, 16 and 17 uh, show remarkably high melting and boiling points compared to the rest of the congeners. So, why that happens? For example, if you take melting point and boiling point of ammonia and water and hydrogen fluoride, they are remarkably high compared to rest of the hydrates in their respective group. Let us look into this, what makes these compounds to show different properties. Let us uh, to analyze this, these trends, let us look into the melting points of uh, several hydrates of uh, group 14 to group uh, 17. I have listed here for example, uh, CH4, uh, so methane, silane, germane and stannane is given here and similarly for group 15, ammonia, phosphine, arsine and stabine is there. And in case of uh, group 16, water, hydrogen sulphide, hydrogen selenide and hydrogen telluride are given. And similarly for group 17, uh, HF, HCl, HBr and HI are given. You can see the trends. Uh, trends from the second element follows the expected order that means steadily increasing their melting point with increase in the uh, atomic number or atomic weight of the corresponding hydride or when we proceed down the group okay, with for heavier elements this melting point is increasing. But you can see anomaly is here, water shows around uh, 100 degree uh, and whereas ammonia shows different, HF shows different. If you extrapolate this one backward 
you expect them to have much lower than what it is seen here. So, these trends can be explained using hydrogen bonding concept and of course, same analogy one can make for boiling points also. You can see here boiling points also to begin with we have highest boiling point for the first member, uh, member like water, hydrogen fluoride, ammonia and whereas, in case of group 14 no such trends are observed. So, methane shows where exactly it is supposed to be according to the expected pattern. So, that means it seems uh, group 14 elements follow this trend whether we take uh, alkane series or silane series or germane series whereas, these trends are not followed and the hydrates of first element show remarkably high melting and boiling points. Okay. So, for this one I have just chosen two sets of uh, compounds here uh, to verify their boiling point. I have chosen group 14 uh, uh, hydrates such as methane, ethane, sorry methane, silane, germane and stannane and in case of group 16 water, hydrogen sulphide, hydrogen selenide and hydrogen telluride are considered. You can see in, in absence of any uh, anomaly water is expected to show a boiling point of minus 100, but that is not the case. We all know that the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade that means it deviates. Why it is deviating that can be explained again uh, very effectively using hydrogen bonding concept. If you take a water molecule, we have this polar covalent bonds, polar covalent bonds and here we all know that uh, because oxygen is being more electronegative it carries delta minus and both the hydrogen atoms carry delta plus. Okay. When it comes in contact with another water molecule it orients in this fashion and there establishes a interaction between H plus and this is hydrogen donor and this is hydrogen acceptor. This is hydrogen donor and this is oxygen is hydrogen acceptor. Because of these interactions this O and H two molecules come together that means, a water molecule can show four such interactions. Let me show you all four. one can keep writing like this. So, that means, each H2O molecule participates in four hydrogen bonding interactions and this is spread across the entire molecule or association okay, something like this. As a result of this one what happens all these water molecules come very close to each other and they are held firmly. And as a result what happens enormous energy is required to melt uh, these uh, molecules to separate these molecules. So, hence they show very high melting and boiling point compared to hydrates of rest of the elements in the corresponding groups. So, one can also uh, represent hydrogen bonding in this fashion. Okay. So, these interactions individually if you take these interactions are very weak collectively these interactions are enormous in case of water molecule uh, due to the infinite number of hydrogen bonding interactions that we come across. So, this brings these molecules close to each other and increasing their density and increasing their boiling point and melting point and okay, you can see how these molecules are arranged in the lattice. So, that means, uh, hydrogen bond enthalpy is in the range of plus 4 to plus 40 kilojoules per mole. They are weak. They are weak compared to HCl bond enthalpy of uh, 431 kilojoules per mole. 
hydrogen bonds are stronger compared to Van der Waals forces that exist between the molecules. Hydrogen bonding interactions are much stronger than Van der Waals forces that exist between the molecules such as uh, methane molecules or ethane molecules etc. Okay. And ice has extensive hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding is responsible for the double helix structure of DNA and hydrogen bonding is also responsible for the structure and activities of biologically important proteins and enzymes. And you can see here helical structure happens because of intense hydrogen bonding between two such DNA strands that gives a, a, a twisted conformation and a, one of the representative hydrogen bonding is shown here between guanine and cytosine. And, and when we talk about uh, van der Waals, uh, often uh, students make mistake in writing the name and one should remember van der Waals full name is Johannes Dederich D. I. So, this is the full name of uh, van der Waals that is called Johannes Dederich van der Waals and when we write shortly we have to write only this one that means we should remember small v and small d and capital W. So, this is how one should write one should not forget about uh, this one often I have seen students making mistake while writing his name. Okay. So, let us look into one more important uh, uh, compound of hydrogen that is hydrogen peroxide. Uh, industrial production of hydrogen peroxide involves the anthroquinone auto oxidation process where an anthroquinol dissolved in an organic solvent is oxidized using air to the corresponding anthroquinone and hydrogen peroxide is formed. The hydrogen peroxide obtained is recovered by extracting the organic solution with water and then uh, the anthroquinone that is formed is then reduced back to the anthroquinol using hydrogen and a palladium catalyst. This process is repeated many times giving a catalytic cycle. Let us look into it how it is made. It is called auto reduction. So, this one on aerial oxidation forms anthroquinone plus H2O2 is formed and this one is in the organic phase when it is uh, treated with water H2O2 comes into water and that can be separated from organic layer. And again to get back this one this is anthroquinone. To convert this anthroquinone back to anthroquinol, one should use hydrogen and a palladium catalyst as a reducing agent. Okay. So, you can get back and again pass hydrogen. So, this can be repeated several times to produce H2O2. And of course, laboratory method involves simple interaction of barium oxide barium peroxide with sulfuric acid.
So, this is laboratory method. So, in case of industrial method, anthroquinol is taken and it is treated with oxygen to undergo aerial oxidation to form anthroquinone and H2O2 is formed. This H2O2 is extracted by treating this organic uh, medium with aqueous so that H2O2 moves to the aqueous layer and then it can be separated. And treating anthroquinone with uh, hydrogen under catalytic condition using palladium catalyst, one can reduce this back to anthroquinol and repeat this cycle to get H2O2. And in laboratory method, one can simply treat barium oxide, barium peroxide with sulfuric acid to form H2O2 and BASO4 is formed, it perspirates out and this can be taken. When crystals of a compound, especially a coordination compounds are grown from a solvent, they may contain solvent of crystallization. If the solvent is water, that means if the crystallization is carried out in aqueous medium, the compound all often get hydrated. The formula of the solvated compound shows the molar ratio in which the solvent of crystallization is present. For example, uh, if you look into copper sulphate, often we come across the formula is written in this fashion. Okay. Or it can also be uh, pronounced as copper 2 sulphate pentahydrate or one can also write so it represent the ratio is 1 is to 5. Okay. And what are the importance of hydrogen in biology? Okay. Hydrogen is cycled by microbial organisms using metalloenzymes. For example, nitrogen fixing bacteria which yields hydrogen as a byproduct of ammonia formation. You can see those things here, uh, various uh, uh, biological cycles in which hydrogen is formed as a byproduct is shown here. And some of the simple compounds of hydrogen are shown again here. The simplest ones are uh, methane in case of group 14 and ammonia in case of group 15 and water in case of group 16 and also their respective shapes and also the geometries also you can see here. And let us look into the reactions of dihydrogen and molecular hydrogen is activated by homolytic or heterolytic dissociation on a metal or a metal oxide surface essentially by using D block metals. That means, uh, if you want to do hydrogenation of unsaturated uh, organic compounds, one can generate the active species from molecular hydrogen. For example, in case of homolytic dissociation, one can take on metal surface what happens is hydrogen is split, homolytic dissociation happens and it forms platinum hydride that means both are H minus they are formed by leaching out one electron from platinum and it forms like this. And then in case of heterolytic dissociation what happens for example, if you take hydrogen or zinc oxide here it shows heterolytic where H plus and H minus are simultaneously formed and as expected H minus will be binding to O and H, H plus will be binding to O and H minus will be binding to zinc and later this H plus or H minus can be transferred to the substrates in the process we call it as hydrogenation reaction. Okay. And reaction of hydrogen with oxygen and halogens also involve often radical chain mechanism. Of course, when we talk about radical chain mechanism, we have to remember three steps initiation of a radical chain reaction uh, and in here essentially what happens if H2 uh, when it is treated with uh, halide it generates the two radicals I have shown there, two radicals are shown here and these two radicals in presence of uh, 
oxygen molecule form HOO dot and then this HOO dot again reacts with uh, this radical here to form two hydroxyl ions and these hydroxyl ions on combination with H2 molecule gives H2 and H dot and this H dot again participates and this uh, radical chain reaction continues. Okay. So, now uh, let us have some questions classify the following compounds into ionic covalent and metallic hydrates. We all know that alkali metals and alkaline earth metals form okay, uh, ionic hydrates uh, because they are extremely high extremely uh, electropositive elements whereas P block elements form covalent hydrates and transient metals form metallic hydrates. So, based on this information we can classify for example, hydrogen sulphide, ammonia, pH 3, uh, aluminum hydrides all of them okay, here up to here all covalent hydrates and uh, here they can be polar or non-polar covalent hydrates whereas sodium hydride, calcium hydride, lithium hydride and beryllium hydride. Beryllium hydride has some covalent character but nevertheless they are all ionic hydrates and REH92- uh, is uh, metallic hydride. In fact, uh, this is one of the rare example of homolyptic uh, uh, transfer metal halides. Here, uh, rhenium exists in plus 7 oxygen state and having 9 hydrogen atoms and the geometry of this one is tricap trigonal prismatic geometry. So, now uh, let us look into another question here classify the compounds such as PH3, CH, CCM hydride and diborane and discuss their probable physical properties. For the molecular compounds specify their sub classification. So, that means whether they are electron deficient, electron precise or electron rich by simply looking into the hetero atom that is present in the hydrates we should be able to tell based on the knowledge we have about uh, these hydrates. For example, phosphine, uh, phosphorus is in trivalent state and phosphorus still has a pair of electrons intact. So, this is essentially a electron rich compound. So, it can act as electro, it can act as a Lewis base. This is Lewis base and cesium hydride, it is uh, electron precise but ionic hydride. Okay, whereas, B 2 H 6 okay, it is electron deficient. So, it acts as a, a Lewis acid. Okay, so, this is how we can classify uh, uh, by looking into the hetero atom and its electronic configuration. And let me summarize overall the chemistry of hydrogen uh, I had discussed so far. Uh, lightest element and the most abundant element in the universe. Okay, hydrogen is the lightest element and the most abundant element in the universe and three isotopes are known for it uh, essentially having one proton, one proton, one neutron and one proton, two neutron, protium, uh, deuterium and tritium. In the combined state, third most abundant on the earth's surface essential in the form of water or hydrated minerals. Industrial production involves water gas shift reaction from petrochemicals. The bulk of the production of H2 comes from petrochemicals, although we use electrolysis and other methods. And hydrogen hydrogen bond dissociation is very high, it is about 435.88 kilojoules per mole, which is highest for a single bond between two atoms of any element for that matter. And atomic hydrogen torch generates a temperature of 4000 Kelvin used for welding in high melting metals. For three types of we come across three type of hydrides when hydrogen interacts with uh, any element in the periodic table. They are ionic hydrides, covalent hydrides and metallic hydrides and all the hydrides are good reducing agents and they are ideal source for cleaner energy in future. I wish I had time to discuss about the hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, for uh, the renewable energy as an alternate source of energy. However, uh, before I complete this course, I shall talk about hydrogen fuel cells at some point of time. With this, I conclude the chemistry of uh, hydrogen 
in my next lecture, I will be focusing on the chemistry of uh, uh, group 1 elements that is the chemistry of alkali metals. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.